I was teaching last week and I was telling my brethren, why is it that most of the naked girls you see online bear Christian names? But you will hardly find Amina and Hadija naked. I was asking them, every religion has works. And it's a shame that we who have life, who are supposed to have higher standards, we have not tapped into the economy of life. These guys have no life. All they have is rules and regulations. So most of them are not doing what they are doing because they love God. They are not doing what they are doing because life is powering them. They are doing it out of fear. But at least they have maintained a moral standard that is an imagination for us. Go to most of these Islamic nations, you will see modesty on the road. Go to any nation that is Christian nation, that's where they are fighting for LGBTQ. That's where everybody is naked, that they are enjoying sun. That's where immorality is rampant. And we have, there's so much impunity with which we do it. I'm not saying most of these Islamic nations, these things don't happen. But at least they, 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 they have a way they do it with modesty. We do it with impunity. To us now, civilization, being learned is to be naked, to be lawless, and to be immoral. That's our definition. Meanwhile, all of us read chemistry and physics with them. Why is our own case different? Because we are not taking advantage of life. They that don't have life, they that are walking under fear, they have built a standard that is superior to most of us who carry the life of God. It means there's something wrong. We have not entered life. You know, when you start walking with life, you will see that life has a language. The language of consciousness, the language of promptings, the language of, 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 of vitality. All of these things are languages of life. So in Christianity, they may not give you a rule to follow, but the Holy Ghost is your law. If you wear a dress that does not glorify God, you will know the prompting must come if you have life. And so when you find Christian lawless, it means they are violating life. And you know the problem, if you violate it in the area of morality, you will not exercise it in the area of vitality. That's why when we are now sick, we want to draw life. The life is not available. Because when the life was correcting how we talk, correcting how we dress, we shut it down. Now that we are sick, that life cannot rise on our inside. Meanwhile, what we received on salvation is eternal life. We are supposed to be the standard for the world to copy. He said, go into all the world and disciple them. We are not just there to win them to Jesus. We are there to teach them how to live. But how can we teach them if ourselves have not demonstrated moral standard? And I'm not suggesting a comparison because there's no comparison. Every other move on earth is a religion. Christianity is not a religion. A religion is an, a ritual put in place as an attempt to worship God. A religion is a belief system that is pursued with a lot of devotion. Christianity is not a religion. There's religion in Christianity, but Christianity is a relationship. God living through men. We are not trying to please God through a devotion. God lives on our inside, and it is the God on our inside that causes us both to do and to will of his good pleasure. So for us, it's not a rule. For us, it's not out of fear. For us, it's the life of God powering us. This is why at the gospel, the first thing God gave you is eternal life. Because that life will teach you how to live like God. He said, there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said, the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. That law teaches you how to talk. That law teaches you how to dress. That law teaches you how to relate with people. And if you obey that life, you will discover that the excellency your life will command will become like God. And so you are not the one who will look at them for an example. They are the ones who will look at you for an example. You know why? That Muslim girl covering herself, if she leaves an Arab Islamic nation, she will become more naked than a Christian. That means what she was doing in the Muslim nation was out of fear. But a Christian who has life, even when you are alone in a foreign land, you don't need people to make you dress well. You don't need people to make you talk well. There is something on your inside that makes you live according to God's standard. It's called eternal life. And so the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The first thing life will do is that life will establish government over you. That government is why you will live righteous. That government is why you will live above sin. That government is why you will live above fear. That government is why you will live a victorious life 
above the things that challenges men. But life does not stop there. After life trains you, there are other dimensions of life that will come out. Number two is that life will give you victory. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, he said, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. He said, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory. That means anybody who has life is a victorious man. It doesn't matter the battles you are fighting. It could be battles of health. It could be battles of money. It could be battles of oppression and manipulation. If you allow life, victory is sure. At the end of the day, you will discover the magnitude of your battle is designed to provoke a magnitude of your testimony. That's how the Christian life is designed. We are victorious people. Listen, we don't know how to fail. If a Christian fails, a demon taught him. We were created to live victoriously. We were created to live excellently because the same life that powers God is the same life that powers us. I'm not saying will power us. I say that's what powers us. That's why even those of us who are not conscious of life, once in a while, we do certain things that we know is beyond our brain because there is something on our inside. When you understand the gospel, you will discover that the gospel is not a message designed to make you a religious man. The gospel is a message designed to transfer life into you. And as you begin to develop that life, you will discover that that life will begin to change you. There was a time when I was a sickler. Every evening, I must have headache on one side of my head. Terrible migraine. I, left, I live perpetually on paracetamol. Every evening, I must take paracetamol or extra panadol until a point came. I realized that the life of God is in me. And if the life of God is in me, sickness cannot dominate me. Because if sickness is dominate me, dominating me, that is not victory. I realized that the life of God is in me, so I should rule over sickness. And I began to pay attention to that life. I began to pay attention to that life. After a while, the headache stopped. After a while, I stopped taking the drugs. Until today, I'm as strong as iron. I travel and have very hectic schedule, but I never fall sick. Every week, I pour out to thousands, thousands of people. I never get sick. If I'm tired, give me a few hours. I go and lie down. When I wake up, I'm energized. And I'm stronger than the next man. And you are wondering, how is it happening? It's eternal life. See, there's life on your inside. But you know how you make life work? Talk it. Talk it. If you want life to work, talk it. That's why the Bible says, let no one in Zion say I'm sick. Because what you say is what determines how life works. If you stand up and say, I'm finished, you will be finished. If you stand up and say, I'm dead, you will be dead. If you stand up and say, I'm defeated, you will be defeated. Life follows your speaking. That's how life works. When we talk, we release life. That's how God operates. That's why every time God wants to create, he speaks. As he speaks, he releases life. And you are created in God's image. So for you to release life too, you talk. Do you see why the devil has trained a generation to talk evil, to talk fear, to talk failure? Because he knows that the direction of your speech is the direction of your life. But some of us who know how life works, even when we are down, we say why men are cast down. We say there is a lifting up. Even when we are afflicted, we say our light affliction are but for a moment. They work for us an exceeding weight of glory. Even when we are sick, we said, if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in us, it quickens our mortal body. Even when we are poor, we said, Jesus, rich as he was, he became poor that we may be made rich. Even when we are seemingly overcome, we say, although the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against them. We say, gather together, you will scatter. Take walls together, it shall not stand. For our God is in our midst. We talk our way out of crisis. There was a time I was traveling. I will be preaching. People will be falling down. Crying. I say, wow. I didn't come to make people fall down. I came to see crutches lifted. I came to see deaf ears open. I came to see blind eyes see. And then I started talking. Every meeting I go, the deaf will hear. The blind will see. The crutches will be dropped. And we kept talking. We kept talking. We kept talking. Today, all of those things are happening. Because when you talk, you release life. When you talk, you emit life. But many are not aware. If you will change your speech for one month, you will make more progress than you have made in one year. Most of you are limited 
because of what you have said. That's how life works. Life is the key to victory. But for you to unlock that victory, you must talk it. You must declare it. You must proclaim it. God himself said, declare now and it shall be established. Declare. So if you don't declare, it cannot be established. If you want it established, you must declare. Why am I teaching you these things? There are certain battles that you will confront in your office. You will exercise authority. It may not work because your authority can cover it based on your revelation. You may need to declare for one month for that thing to change. There are some sicknesses that will ravage people in your family. You will pray for them by authority. The sickness will not go. It doesn't mean you have been defeated. Keep declaring for one month. You will discover that the more you declare, the more the sickness will go. I have prayed for many people with tumor. Some of them vanish instantly. Others, every day it's reducing. It's reducing until it vanishes. Because on one side, you can use authority. On another side, you use life. The way life works is to talk and keep talking. And keep talking. And don't stop talking until you see the result. Most of you, you are in ministry. You have tried, the ministry is not working. And all you are telling everybody is that I've done everything, it's not working. You are joking. It will not work. The greatest prophet will anoint you. It will not work. Because even God listened to hear what you say to perform it. He wanted to carry the children of Israel out of Egypt for 11 days. They said demonic and negative things. And God said, I have heard what you have said. And he said, because you have said it, you will perish in this land. And he said, every one day will become one year. That's how they walked in the wilderness for 40 years. Because God listens to what you say to perform it. Because he's a God of life. And the way he releases life is in accordance to your speaking. If you want to take kingdom to the world, you must talk it for you to see it. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oroho, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.